The literary world is mourning the loss of one of the most celebrated science fiction authors of all time. You guys are going to have to stay tuned because I'm live at 11 o'clock going behind the scenes and getting all the juicy details. The scandal plagued Philadelphia Housing Authority has a brand new scandal on its hands and it sounds all too familiar. So now it's just a matter of waiting, waiting for the river to recede and the cleanup in these low-lying areas to begin. Then and only then will the city be able to move forward from this historic event. Big banks held firm today on Wall Street, the first day since Moody's decision to downgrade their credit ratings. Bloomberg's Deborah Kostrin has more live at the New York Stock Exchange. Republican frontrunner Mitt Romney has a chance to put more distance between himself and his rivals with three big primaries. Learning more about the gunman in that horrific school shooting in California, seven people were killed at a Christian university in Oakland. And in Afghanistan, 18 people were killed in a 12-hour rampage by the Taliban. The insurgents held hotel guests hostage as the attackers tried to fight off security forces. Afghan officials eventually killed the attackers. And now to the west, where the battle to control wildfires has been challenged by hot and windy weather. A red flag warning is in effect for much of Colorado, as well as Utah and parts of Wyoming, Arizona, and Nevada. The dangerously dry conditions could last through the weekend. And finally, police are looking for a man who stole a $150,000 Salvador Dali painting from a New York art gallery. Police say the man removed the painting from the wall, put it in a bag, and just fled. Dali completed the work in 1949. You've got students from Pennsylvania. And that would be their first encounter with the First Lady. It was an unforgettable day for students from Stetzer Elementary School in Chester. They were among dozens of children from across the country who got to plant the first seeds of the season with Michelle Obama. It was all worth it because we got to meet the First Lady. It's amazing. I actually got to hug the First Lady and she took a picture right next to me and she signed my shirt. Inviting the children to the White House Kitchen Garden is all part of Michelle Obama's initiative to get children to eat healthy and stay active. It was the number one thing on her mind when she sat down with me for an exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview in the Kennedy Garden. Garden is a wonderful byproduct. Um, you know, we get great fruits and vegetables and we can eat it as a family and serve it at state dinners. But the real beauty is what you just saw. You know, kids coming from all over the country, sit, sitting in the dirt, um, having just casual conversation, hearing their stories. I also asked the First Lady about so-called food deserts, communities where there are few grocery stores with fresh produce. Particularly uh, communities like Chester, you can't tell a mother to add vegetables to the menu when she's got to take a cab and two buses just to get to a place to buy a head of lettuce. Let's talk about Malia and Sasha. Uh huh. Do you face challenges getting them to keep moving and stay healthy, or are they just the perfect kid. Oh, of course I think they're the perfect kids. But I, you know, I, we're as a as parents, we our struggles are, are no different. Michelle Obama shared that before they came to the White House when she and her husband were working parents, it was hard to get her kids to eat healthy. And that's one of the reasons why I vowed that when I came to the White House, if we had the the, the honor of serving, that I'd find a way to uh, raise this issue up. During the interview, we switched gears a bit to talk about the Trayvon Martin case. Mrs. Obama said her heart goes out to the parents of the slain teenager. And we are just uh, happy that there will be a thorough investigation, that the Justice Department is, is involved, and it's also good that the nation is focused on this, and it will give uh, us an opportunity to have some conversations with our own co within our own communities and with our own families. The First Lady also shared with me that she's excited about getting back on the campaign trail at some point and coming back to the Delaware Valley. Reporting from the White House, Shirley Nalicott, Channel 6 Action News. Drilling, lifting, and assembling. It takes a lot of work and a lot of hands to build a playground, but for the children who will soon enjoy it, it is all worth it. I think this is absolutely phenomenal. It'll be a great anchor for the community. It'll be a wonderful place for children to get outside and to get fit. The work here at the Overbrook Environmental Education Center is just one part of a huge project being organized by the nonprofit Rebuilding Together. Around the corner, homes owned by low-income families are getting complete renovations. I'm just so excited that everybody is here volunteering for us. Renee Wilson's corner property is getting new landscaping and new stairs. 
She says to have had to pay for this herself would have been next to impossible. Just for my property alone, well over $50,000. This is such a blessing. Across the street, Andrea Spencer is getting her walls painted in a brand new kitchen, and it couldn't be better timing. My husband was laid off a little while ago, and I went out and got a, a, a job, which is low paying, but it helps make ends meet, and there's no way that we could have afforded these repairs without the support of this program. Just There was just no way. And this is a massive undertaking. 30 homes, 1,000 volunteers, and it all has to get done in three days. Helping to make that happen are people like Jawan Williams. Instead of staying inside and playing video games, I came out and helped my grandmother. And that, organizers say, is what rebuilding together is all about. Shirley Nalicott, Channel 6 Action News.